Thanks, Hedley, for the introduction, and thanks to Reed Corporate for the opportunity to present here today. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'll be providing an update on the company's activities over the past year, specifically on our emerging copper system, which I believe represents an exciting opportunity for investors. Lachlan Star is a gold and copper fo focused explorer with a new management team and a revitalized exploration portfolio, a portfolio that we acquired late last year and one that has potential for significant discovery. Our team at Lachlan Star is small. We are exploration geologists. We have a passion for exploration and we have a strong technical background in global exploration. We have also been fortunate enough to have been directly involved in some significant discoveries along the way. We are already off to a great start this year and have generated some exciting drill targets, including our high-grade copper system at Basin Creek, which I think is an exciting value proposition and I look forward to covering today. Our disclaimer, which can be found on the company website or on the ASX platform with this presentation. So front and centre, the key highlight of this presentation is the emerging high-grade copper system we've identified at Basin Creek. This is a prospect that was drilled in the early 1970s, which has not seen a single follow-up drill hole in over 50 years. So for co some context, up on the screen and to your right, this is a representative section of the Basin Creek semi-massive chalcopyrite, or copper sulphide, in that drill core. It's a bit tarnished now, it's been sitting in the core tray for 50 years. This is a target we generated over the past few months and came about through a bit of investigative work of New South Wales open file exploration reports and a bit of a trawl through the State Geological Survey's excellent drill core library at Londonderry. It's a great repository for historical data and drill core, which I highly recommend visiting. At Londonderry, we pulled out and pondered over pallets of core that had been sitting at the library untouched for 50 years. And the more we looked, the more we became excited about what appeared to be a copper sulphide rich system that had not seen any follow-up drill testing. Once we get a few holes into this system, it could be a great case study for the identification of a potential discovery through available public domain information. In addition to Basin Creek, we also have a suite of other projects that represent exciting district scale opportunities and drill targets within the broader Macquarie Arc and Cobar Basin of New South Wales, both premier destinations for discovery and mining. Uh, obviously, our approach to exploration is quite simple. We're focusing on dollars going into the ground we're applying quality science-backed exploration, and we aim to create value through discovery. And we aim to back this through delivery of results. We have the right people in place as well to support this going forward. Our exploration portfolio is focused on the world-class Lachlan Fold Belt of New South Wales, a well-known premier location for large economic mineral deposits and emerging discoveries. We have two priority priority project areas covering three and a half thousand square kilometres of prospective ground. The Juni and Balura North projects in south central New South Wales, which overlie the southern extensions of the Macquarie Arc, which hosts the major copper and gold porphyry and epithermal deposits of Cadia, North Parks and Cowell, as well as key land positions within the metal-rich Cobar Basin, adjacent to and immediately a long strike of the copper-rich CSA mine and the lead-zinc-silver Endeavour mine. As I mentioned, Lachlan Star acquired these projects late last year, and we have since expanded our footprint with new applications and granted tenure over key structural positions within the central Cobar Basin. So if we jump straight into Basin Creek, on your right there is a regional image that shows the projects or prospects location within the Macquarie Arc relative to the other, relative to the other major deposits and operations. Basin Creek sits within the Juni project tenements at the southern end of the Juni narrow mine belt and overlies the Gilmore Switcher, a major regional structure that is spatially associated with other significant metal deposits along its length. Basin Creek is interesting in that it is a copper rich system but is located within a broader 10 to 15 kilometer surface geochemical footprint with gold to the north at Main Ridge, copper at Basin Creek and a lead zinc system to the south. Today, I'll be focusing specifically on Basin Creek, um, but we do know big systems have big footprints, and our current interpretation is that we are within, or this geochemical corridor is representing a bigger mineral system. So up on the screen here, we have a long section looking eastwards through the Basin Creek system, showing the diamond drilling pierce points through the plane of view. If you, on your left there is the north, and to the south is on your right. What drew us to Basin Creek was the historically reported high-grade copper intersections, with the main headliner being the 21 metres at 4.5% copper, which includes 4.5 metres at 18.5% copper, 
This is that semi-massive chalcopyrite, copper sulfide I showed you earlier. This intersection is primary ore and sits only 40 metres below the surface. Other plus percent intersections include three metres at five and a half percent, six metres at 1.8, including one and a half at 6.4, the deepest reported high-grade intersection, and seven and a, seven and a half metres at almost 2 percent copper. These are surrounded by several other thicker intersections running anywhere between 0.1 to 1 percent copper. We spent some time and effort going through the old reports and pulling out the historic pallets of core to conduct our own interpretations. And the most interesting thing in going through this effort was that we quickly realised over 80% of what had been drilled had not been sampled. Many of the core trays still had uncut, solid, unsampled core sitting in the core trays with visible charcoal pyrite. Absolutely astonishing. And the greatest thing about this data is that it's all tangible, the core is well preserved and of fantastic quality. The quality of the geological reporting in the time is also top notch. This all helps to validate our thinking. So our first order of business once we identified this was to pull all these higher grade intersections to, and relog them. We also cut and sampled additional intersections containing visible charcoal pyrite to confirm that the mineralization did indeed extend beyond what was previously reported. And we put all this information into 3D. The aim of this was to contextualize this in the sense of a mineralized system, something that previous explorers had failed to do. By applying our own interpretations, we've been able to identify a north plunging high grade chute within a broader mineralized envelope, and which remains open down plunge and along strike. There's plenty of scope to build on what is now an emerging shallow high grade copper system. I'll now show you two cross sections running through the system as depicted here on the long section by the A and B prime positions. On the left here, you'll see the A section, on the right, the B section, which is about 70 metres to the north of the A cross section. And to help place yourselves, on the top left there, you'll see that shallow high-grade intersection that ran four and a half metres at 18%, which I was talking about earlier. What we see here is, again, a, a near-vertical high-grade chute that plunges to the north within a broader 150-metre mineralised charcopyrite magnetite chloride halo. The system is currently unconstrained in that it has not been closed off by the historic drilling. On the right there, you can see hole nine, which has the deepest high-grade intersection reported at uh, one and a half metres at 6%. This is about 200 metres below surface. The red bars on the drill traces are where core have been sampled and have returned greater than 0.1% copper, with the yellow trace being unsampled core but containing visible charcoal pyrite. We plan to revisit the core library in the coming weeks and sample these sections, which is a great low-cost exercise for us for sure, but one that adds significant knowledge and value to the project. You'll also notice that the deeper hole traces seem to be entering a second mineralized envelope, something, we, something that is intriguing and we will investigate further. So what are our next steps at Basin Creek? Well, we have all the necessary regulatory permits approved and in place to drill. We have our land access agreement secured and we're looking to have the drill rig turning on this project in the next month. So be sure to keep an eye out on that news flow. I guess to add more support as to the quality of this target and the exploration upside presented, here we have a, an isometric topographic view of the project area looking towards the northeast. The extent of the historic drilling is shown there. This work was completed in the early 1970s and has not seen a single drill hole following it up since, with only 300 metres in strike having been drill tested over a width of about 100 metres. When we take a step out and we look at the surface geochemistry, we see a nice coherent elevated footprint that extends over 1,400 metres. This material is not transported, it is all in place, and the quality of the results to the north are equal to and comparable to where they drilled in the south there and provides plenty of scope for exploration upside. This is something that we'll look to obviously investigate further over the coming months, but we're quite excited by it. Now as we move on to our North Cobar project, North Cobar represents another high potential exploration opportunity with our land position being strategically positioned along strike and contiguous to our neighbours who have the major mining operations of CSA Mine and Endeavour. Uh, historically, Cobar has seen over 150 years of mining activity on what are some exceptionally high grade copper gold and base metal systems. I think it is fair to say that the region is currently going through a bit of a resurgence with lots of M&A activity and some exciting new emerging discoveries in the South Cobar region. A key theme to this region is the importance that structure plays to the emplacement of the en and endowment of the district's deposits. Uh, 
And what is interesting with our North Cobar ground is that it overlies the intersection of two major fault corridors, both which are significantly endowed. Through the exploration work we have completed so far this year, we have been able to identify several compelling targets, two of which are shown here on the map, which I believe demonstrate the key criteria for Cobar style deposits elsewhere in the region. If we take a step out, uh, out for a moment and look at the regional fault architecture, as shown by this cartoon image on the left, we can see a strong relationship between faults or fault intersections and known deposits. These structures provide the necessary plumbing required for the emplacement of mineralization within the district. At North Coba, the intersection of these fault corridors provides an excellent geological environment for ore deposition, and surprisingly, the project has, is significantly underexplored with minimal drilling and other exploration work having been completed over the past. If we look westwards through the Rookery Fault Zone, as shown by the cartoon long section in the right there, we can see, we can show the northerly strike of this deposit-rich fault corridor has the potential for further discovery, and where we have two compelling targets that are close to being drill ready. On a side note, our recent applications across the central Cobar Basin in the lower quadrant of the left-hand side of that image were recently granted and overlie equally prospective structural positions. We look forward to getting out on ground across these new tenements, which will generate us a solid pipeline of quality targets. If we take a look, closer look at our two priority targets here at North Cobar, Knights Tank and Galahad, both are, at the, are nearing the drill ready stage. We are just awaiting the required drilling permits approvals, which we expect any day now. Both targets tick the right boxes for the key criteria we expect for Cobar-style deposits within the district. These being the presence of structural faults acting as fluid pathways, strong gravity features generally representing metal addition, and both of these coincident with anomalous magnetics that results from changes to the bedrock due to alteration. We are encouraged by the quality of these drill targets, and we look forward to getting out there once drill permits are received, and we have completed our other drill program at Basin Creek. Just closing out now in our corporate position, since putting out our Basin Creek release, we have seen a reasonable appreciation to our share price, which I believe still doesn't fully reflect the underlying value of our portfolio. We have a low volume of shares on issue at just over 200 million and a low market cap of just 21 million. We are highly leveraged to the upside with any exploration success, which I believe our high grade copper system at Basin Creek may give us. And we have a strong cornerstone shareholder base, with DevX resources owning 36%, the directors holding a further six, and Tim Goyder recently on the share registry with 4%. As mentioned, it is just a small management team, Alan Hawkins, who's my exploration manager and myself, but we have the requisite skills to transform Lockman Star into, into a successful exploration company. So the key highlights. We believe Basin Creek is a compelling target. It's a high-grade copper system, which has not seen a single follow-up drill hole in over 50 years. Our current interpretation is there is scope to further define high-grade copper mineralization both within the existing drill portions of the system and further along strike. The target is drill ready, and we are gearing up to have the drill bit turning early next month. At North Cobar, our on-ground exploration has identified two Cobar-style geophysical and structural targets with drilling permit applications in the system. We anticipate this project to be drill ready this quarter. Our project pipeline comprises prospective land positions through New South Wales, a tier one jurisdiction. We recognise that to deliver a discovery, we need to continually generate, advance and test only the highest quality targets. And lastly, a portfolio is nothing without a competent technical team, a team that is focused on discovery and value creation. These elements combined can create significant shareholder value. Thank you, and if you'd like to hear more, I am next door at booth 39. I can talk you further through Basin Creek. Thanks very much.